Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the fourth video of Exchange Hybrid series. In the last video, we discussed what is centralized mail flow in Exchange Hybrid, and we discussed few inbound and outbound email scenarios in Exchange Hybrid environment. In this particular video, I will be discussing what is FreeBusy. I will be discussing the architecture of FreeBusy in Exchange Hybrid deployment. And then I will be discussing the free busy lookups from on premise to exchange online and from exchange online to on premise. Free busy is a feature that allows you to see when others are free, busy, or they are out of office so that you can schedule your meetings with them or you can find an appropriate time for your meetings. Let's say we have two users, John and Bob. Both users work in the same organization. John works in IT department and Bob works in HR department. John wants to schedule a meeting with Bob at 5. Now to check if Bob is available at 5 p.m. for a meeting, John can simply call him and he can ask if he can schedule a meeting with Bob at 5 p.m. But what if Bob is not answering the phone or he is not available? then how John will find out if Bob is available at 5 p.m. so that he can schedule a meeting with him. Now this is where free busy comes in the picture. To check Bob's availability, John will log in to his Outlook client. He will create a meeting. He will add Bob as an attendee in scheduling assistant and he will be able to check if Bob is available at 5 p.m. or he is not available. If Bob is available, then John will schedule the meeting. And if Bob is busy during that time, then John will have to reschedule this meeting. Now let's understand how to identify if someone is free or busy. Within scheduling assistant, if you see blue color blocks, that means user is not available or he has another meeting during that particular time. If you see blocks with blue color lines that indicate the attendee has received your meeting, but he hasn't accepted the meeting yet. And these type of meetings are called tentative meetings. Next is out of office. It means you are trying to reach someone when he is on vacation or he is not in office. Working elsewhere indicates that the user might be working from a different location. No information indicates that FreeBusy is not able to retrieve the availability for that particular user. So in this scenario, you might have to troubleshoot that why FreeBusy is not working. Outside of working hours indicate that you are trying to check someone's availability outside his working hours. And these type of blocks indicate that user is available during that time. So this is how you check if someone is free or he is busy at a given time. Now before we jump into free busy working, let me discuss a few important concepts. The first important concept that I'm going to discuss is Federation Trust. A Federation Trust creates a trust relationship between two different organizations. When you sign up for an Office 365 tenant, a Federation Trust is automatically created with Microsoft Federation Gateway. Microsoft Federation Gateway is now called Azure Authentication System. Azure Authentication System is a cloud-based service that works as a mediator between two organizations. So when this Federation Trust is created, Azure Authentication System assigns certain values for this Federation Trust. You can check these values by running get hyphen federation trust pipe FL in Exchange Online PowerShell. For every Office 365 tenant, you will see 260563 value in application identifier attribute. And application URI will have a value outlook.com. But for on premise exchange organization, a federation trust is not created automatically. We can create a federation trust between on-premise exchange and Azure authentication system by running HCW or it can be created with the help of PowerShell commands. If you run get hyphen federation trust pipe FL in on-premise exchange organization, you will see an application identifier value 
and application URI that is assigned by Microsoft Federation Gateway to your on-premise exchange organization. The initial part of application URI will remain same for every on-premise exchange organization and only domain name will differ. The second important concept that I want to discuss is the changes that are done in the attributes of mailboxes when we deploy Exchange Hybrid or when you migrate on-premise mailboxes to Office 365. So let's assume that we have Exchange Hybrid deployed. We have one user in on-premise with name John Smith and the other user Bob Ross that had a mailbox in on-premise earlier, but now he is migrated to Office 365. John's mailbox is hosted in on-premise. Now in Exchange Hybrid, we deploy Azure AD Connect, and this is one of the prerequisites for Exchange Hybrid deployment. When John's account was synchronized to Office 365, this account will reflect as a mail enabled mail user in Office 365. This mail user account will have a target address bob at concepts.com added in external email address attribute. External email address attribute is used for auto discover query or to route emails from Office 365 to on premise. This account will have a secondary email address in on premise as john at concepts.mail.onmicrosoft.com. Bob's mailbox was in on premise earlier, but now it is migrated to Exchange Online. So now Bob has a remote mailbox in on premise Exchange. He has a target address added in on premise mailbox that is bob at concepts.mail.onmicrosoft.com. When Bob's mailbox was migrated to Office 365, a secondary email address was added in Office 365, that is bob at concepts.mail.onmicrosoft.com. So these are the attributes that are stamped when we deploy Exchange Hybrid or we migrate users from on-premise to Office 365. Now the difference between primary and secondary email address is, that primary email address is used to send and receive emails, but the secondary email address can be used to retrieve emails only or to receive emails only. We cannot send emails using secondary email address. When we run HCW while deploying Exchange Hybrid, it adds domain.mail.onmicrosoft.com accepted domains in on-premise Exchange Server. This domain is also called coexistence domain. This domain is added as a secondary email address domain to the email address policies in on-premise. And this domain is used as a suffix for secondary email addresses and target addresses. I have discussed this concept in one of the previous videos where I discussed HCW in detail. So you can go through that video in case you want to know the entire process of HCW. The third concept that I want to discuss is free busy lookups or free busy directions in Exchange Hybrid. In Exchange Hybrid deployment, there are two types of free busy lookups. When an on-premise user wants to check availability of a cloud user, this type of lookup is called on-premise to cloud lookup. And when Office 365 user wants to check availability of an on-premise user, this type of lookup is called cloud to on-premise lookup. So now let's understand how FreeBSD lookups work from on-premise to cloud and from cloud to on-premise. Let's assume that John, whose mailbox is in on-premise, wants to schedule a meeting with Bob, whose mailbox was migrated from on-premise to Office 365. John wants to check if Bob is available during that time so that he can book the meeting. So John will create a meeting from Outlook or from OWA. He will add Bob as an attendee within the scheduling assistant. Then on-premise Exchange Server will find that Bob has a target address that is pointing to concepts.mail.onmicrosoft.com and this mailbox is not in on-premise. Exchange Server has a service that is called availability service. 
that is responsible to provide up to date information of FreeBZ. Availability service will try to find a path to query Bob's FreeBZ information from Office 365. Availability service will first check if on-premise exchange server has intra-organization connector with domain name concepts.mail.onmicrosoft.com. An intra-organization connector is created if you have exchange server 2013, 2016 or 2019. If there is no intra-organization connector, then availability service will look for organization relationship that is configured with domain name concepts.mail.onmicrosoft.com. Suppose there is no intra-organization connector and organization relationship. In that case, availability service will look for availability address space. Availability address space has a domain name set to domain.mail.onmicrosoft.com and this is used for free busy lookups when there is no organization relationship or intra organization connector. Let's assume the on-premise exchange server has organization relationship. Availability service will check the organization relationship and will look for application URI attribute that is set to outlook.com. Outlook.com is an identifier for the Office 365 organization trust in Azure authentication system or Microsoft Federation Gateway. Now at this point, availability service has found how it can reach Office 365 organization where Bob's mailbox is located. Availability service will request Azure authentication system for a delegation token so that it can communicate with Office 365. Azure authentication system will send a delegation token to the on-premise exchange server. When exchange server will receive the token, it will send an auto discover request to exchange online. This request is sent to the URL that is mentioned within target auto discover EPR attribute of organization relationship. If auto discover request is passed, on-premise exchange will make an EWS request to exchange online along with the delegation token. This EWS request is made for Bob's free busy availability. Exchange online will check and validate the delegation token that was issued to on-premise organization by Microsoft Federation Gateway. Once this token is verified, Exchange Online will return free busy information of Bob's mailbox and then John will be able to see whether Bob is free or he is busy during that time. Now let's understand how free busy lookup works from Exchange Online to on premise. In this scenario, Bob wants to see free busy information of John. Bob's mailbox was migrated from on premise to Office 365 and John's mailbox is in exchange on premise. John is synchronized to Office 365 as a mail enabled mail user because we have exchange hybrid deployment. Bob will log in to his Outlook or OWA. He will create a meeting and will add John as an attendee within scheduling assistant. Exchange Online Server will try to find John's mailbox so that it can retrieve its free busy information. But Exchange Online will find that John is a mail user and it has a target address added within the external email address attribute. Now availability service that is running on Exchange Online will try to find a path to reach on-premise organization so that it can fetch John's free busy information. Availability service will first check if there is an intra organization connector created with domain concepts.com. If there is no intra organization connector created, then availability service will look for organization relationship that is created with domain concepts.com. If no intra organization connector or organization relationship is found, then availability service will look for availability address space. Availability address space will check the domain name within domain attribute of availability address space and will try to find the on-premise organization. 
let's assume we have organization relationship configured in exchange online availability service will check target application uri attribute that has a value of the federation trust between on premise and azure authentication system now availability service knows that i need to contact this organization to collect john's free busy information then exchange online will make a request to azure authentication system for a delegation token so that it can communicate with on premise organization azure authentication system will issue a delegation token to exchange online once this token is received exchange online will make an auto discover request to on premise organization this request is sent to the url that is mentioned in the target address uri of organization relationship in exchange online if this url is incorrect auto discover request will fail once auto discover request is passed exchange online will make an ews request to on premise along with delegation token on premise exchange will validate the token and once validation is successful it will return free busy information to exchange online and bob will be able to see whether john is free or he is busy at that time so this is how free busy lookups work in exchange hybrid deployment so if you have learned something new from this particular video please write in comments and please subscribe to the channel thank you guys thank you for your time take care